Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Tar Heel Illustrated. Dot com, or if you're watching on our YouTube channel, Tar Heel Illustrated. I'm THI staff writer Jacob Turner, and joining me as he always does, our very own publisher, Andrew Jones. And Andrew, I think I can speak for both of us when I say it was a, it was a pretty exciting day because we finally got to see some Carolina football in person, up close and personal. I know we obviously covered the games last season, but with COVID and everything, this is today was the closest I think we've been in. I don't know how long it's been. I can't even, I couldn't even begin to tell you. Well, it seems first, like forever. Max first season. Yeah, yeah I, absolutely. I don't know about you, Jacob. I, I felt normal. And what was really neat is I, I ran into a lot of people there. There were parents mm-hmm. in the stands and maybe a few other people in the stands just kind of watching practice and talked to quite a few people. And one of the things that was pretty consistent was uh, I guess, I guess you feel normal now. How's it, how's it feel to be normal today? <laughs> course we're wearing a mask and we're outside so uh yeah. it wasn't that all but i but i was representing he was uh, repping the orioles guys where are my baltimore orioles mask have today? no worries oils fans right every day <laughs> next week so they're they're not in the last place in american league east yet um <laughs> so it was really a lot of fun just to be normal mm-hmm. to be mm-hmm. out there and to see this team and it's been a while since we've seen them in practice and uh I have observations that we'll get to here in a second, but I'm just, I'm, I'm so glad that UNC let us out. Thank you to Jeremy uh, for, yeah, big, for big, opening big, up the yeah. media. I know, you know, Mac wants us out there as much as possible as well. They understand that we're the liaisons to the public. So the more we can see, the better job we do covering this program. Mm-hmm. And uh, it's going to be interesting covering these guys because they are loaded. Yeah, they are. that, And that's one of the things we'll, we'll dive in and talk about here in a little bit, but For those who maybe don't know what we're talking about right now, Carolina had an open practice today. It's the first time we've been able to see the team since, like AJ said, the, you know, up close and personal since really Max first season at the helm with COVID. Now everything went on. So team practice this morning, Saturday morning in Keenan Stadium for about two hours. And we were out there. I was shooting a little bit of video. Kevin Roy, our our very own Kevin Roy, was shooting a little bit of photo and video as well. Dina King was out there. And then AJ was obviously out there uh, writing down some notes, uh, running all over the place. I know you got your steps in this morning, AJ, but. (laughs) A little bit. I still got to get some more before the Sweet 16 starts. Yeah, I did. I was all over the place. I got to see Mm -hmm. every position group today. Got to talk to some pretty uh, cool uh, fans, some nice people. Got to meet Eddie West, someone I met today. Uh, He was there with his son and his grandson, so it was nice to see them and and, uh, get their thoughts, get their take on things. And he's somebody that definitely knows Carolina football, so that was – it's always a pleasure when we get a chance to meet fans and kind of get their take because sometimes we're so insulated in the media that we're just bouncing stuff off of one another from a media perspective it's nice to uh hear what other very knowledgeable people have to say as well and he and he he certainly knows what he's talking about absolutely yeah it was really cool i know i I was obviously running around with the camera the whole time so i didn't get to talk to as many people as i would have liked i was running around with like a chicken with his head cut off out there but big shout out and big thank you to everybody that came up to aj and that watches our videos and, and you know, they complimented us. So that, that was really cool to see and definitely something that, you know, makes it rewarding, you know, when we, we do what we do, but AJ, let's dive into it, man. What are your kind of, I mean, it ask you kind of a basic question. I know this is super broad, but what were your kind of initial, initial takeaways from today's practice? Cause I think for me, I'm not going to dive into a lot of what I saw yet, but I think the biggest thing that I noticed today and kind of took away from today's practice, which I also tweeted is I just thought the energy this team had from really the first minute of practice to the last minute of practice was, was through the roof and, and guys were really getting after it today. But what were your kind of initial takeaways from, from today's practice? Yeah. Well, I second that there was tremendous spirit third mm-hmm. practice, first day in shells. And uh, you could hear the popping, which is oh, It's a beautiful sound. <laughs> they were hitting each other at times, man. They some, were hitting greatest, each other. <laughs> some of the greatest sounds in sports to me, the sound of a bat hitting a baseball, it's a mm-hmm. beautiful sound and the sound of pads popping. I love that yeah. sound. Yeah. And mm-hmm. when Caleb Hood ran the ball today, you heard pads popping. And sometimes he was the aggressor. He was the initiator, mm-hmm. which was very impressive. But the thing that stu- that popped out to me the most, Jacob, and, and I'm and let me preface this by saying I'm not being critical of the past. Okay. I'm just simply juxtaposing three years ago when we went to one of these practices and Larry was good. Larry Fedor was really good about letting us in to several practices, more than several practices a year, uh, and and where they are now. And and the difference is when Matt Brown told us last week, and I'm I'm quoting him, I'm not saying we because I'm not part of the program, we look good. We look better. We look like a team. We look like we're good. He kept saying that last week, and that just popped out today. I mean, they Mm -hmm. look like a football team from top to bottom. 
an example. You watch different, I watched every position group today, watch drills and everything. And I've been doing this for years. I've been doing it at other schools I've covered. I did it when I covered the Panthers. I watched position groups in the NFL. And you, of course, when you watch the NFL, you know, the first day of camp in August, and they've got 110 guys out there, whatever, there's not much of a drop off from the first guy to the last guy because they're all pros in a sense, right? Well, mm-hmm. previously, when I'm watching a drill, you'd watch the first three or four guys, and then there would be a big drop off. You could see where the walk ons were. You could see where the, the filling out the 105 roster spots, which is a lot of guys that were never going to get on the field. Mm-hmm. And if they were, they weren't going to help you that much. The difference between then and now is I'm watching the fifth guy, the sixth guy, the seventh. You know, you're looking at some guys saying, man, that guy's not on scholarship, but he looks like a football player, like a real power five football player. But all the guys that are on scholarship look legit. The 75th guy today, 75th best looking guy today may have been the 50th best looking guy a few years ago. A great way so to put it, yeah. The process of building the depth in this program and bringing in bodies and dudes that can play the sport and have potential is just amazing to see it all packaged together up close today at practice because it's a considerable difference. So they want to get to the point. They keep talking about this. And Max said the number one goal of spring practice is to build depth. They want to go too deep at every position without much of a drop-off. Well, I don't know how much they'll achieve that, but I'll tell you right now, their second line and their third line and even their fourth line of players, like the true freshmen and stuff like that, are a healthy notch or more above where they were a few years ago. So mm-hmm. they may not reach all of their goals this coming football season, but it is clear that the program is extremely healthy and that even though they're going to lose a bunch of dudes after this coming season, there are dudes behind them that will be ready to fill in. And that's what be, that's what a program is. And in just a short period of time, they have a program, a program mm-hmm. that looks like it's sustainable and it's sustainable because there are dudes across the board. That jumped out at me more than anything today. Yeah, completely agree. And- Completely agree with everything you said on that because that was kind of my biggest takeaway. Obviously, I was looking through a camera lens, you know, 90% of the time I was there. So not watching him and wasn't able to watch him as hard as you were. But just from me kind of running around, shooting video, shooting photos, that was so clear and evident, you know, really from the from the minute practice started, just the amount of guys and um, not only the amount of guys, which you kind of alluded to, but the amount of guys that look big enough, look fast enough to already play at this level. And a lot of those guys are young. So just a ton of depth on, on both sides of the ball, which is like we've heard from Mac Brown since the minute he stepped in back in November 2018. He's been trying to build depth in this program. And I don't know if he's ever going to be completely satisfied with it, but he's definitely got to be getting close with the with the amount of depth that he's got on this team right now. <laughs> Jacob, I've covered a lot of really successful coaches. And the difference mm-hmm. between the super, super successful ones, the Hall of Famers, and maybe the ones that aren't super successful is the ones that, that – are successful. The Hall of Famers are never satisfied. Yeah, no, never. No. The ones that aren't as successful sometimes get satisfied. So mm-hmm. Mack will never be satisfied. Roy Williams is never satisfied. Kay's never satisfied. No. The great ones. Now, I guarantee you Nick Saban's never satisfied. Oh, no way. <laughs> that's, and that's why they're great. So, mm-hmm. you know, that's pretty easy to see once you've been around this stuff for a long time. And I'm sure a lot of other people see it as well, whether they're, even if they're not around it. I, I, I want to think, the thing that really, another thing that really jumped out at me about today is mm-hmm. the value of the kids that came in last year that played right away. Absolutely. Absolutely. Looking yeah. at every one of them today, they physically are different. Mm-hmm. Cayman Rucker is different. Tony Grimes is different. Tony Grimes. Yeah. There were a couple – uh, Antoine Green couldn't get out of his break on one. Play. No, I, I did see that a couple times. Yeah, oh I did see that a couple God. times. You don't yeah. want to talk up a guy too much, but he looks he really good. Different. I'll mm-hmm. tell you who really, really stuck uh, stuck out to me was Desmond Evans. Mm-hmm. You know, Desmond's long and lean. He's probably always going to look long and lean in a football uniform, but he didn't look as you know long and lean as a year ago. Last year, he was just a guy that put on a college uniform and wasn't really up to snuff, um, you know, being filled out for the college Physique, level. Yeah, I, think it, I think it hurt him at times, but he got mm-hmm. out there and he played 150 or whatever snaps it was. He got a he got a really healthy sample of the speed of the game, the physicality of it, and uh, he looked a lot bigger today. In fact, 
uh, Kevin Dean and I hung out for a while. Yeah, you left because you had to go do the Zoom interviews. Yeah. And uh, Kevin Dean and I hung out for a while after practice, and we were over by the tunnel, and the players were taking their gear, all their pads off and stuff. And Desmond came over and he took his pads off. And Kevin, I wasn't looking. And Kevin tapped me. He said, "Look." And yeah. I looked. I was like, "Yeah, you know, I was at his announcement in high school." And yeah, I forgot about that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And just a different looking human being. Mm-hmm. And, uh, the, you know, Max said that what they wanted to go a little bit later to give the early enrollees a chance to get their bodies to where they can compete a little bit more. But it also gave those other guys, because remember, a lot of them didn't have the offseason there last year. They didn't have mm-hmm. spring practice. So a lot of these these guys that are in their second year now, this is their first spring. This was mm-hmm. their first true two and a half, three month offseason period of straight up weight training that they had. since they got there. And man, some of those guys mushroomed. They look big. Cameron Rooker mm-hmm. looks bigger. Christian Barner looks huge. Um, now it was impressive to see some of the physical changes that even though we weren't so close a year ago, because we were in press boxes and that kind of thing, but you could still see the difference. It, a lot of things popped out today, and, and those are among the few things that really, really stood out to me, the things that I've already mm-hmm. mentioned. Yeah, kind of piggybacking off of that, I was obviously doing my I focused my video and photo coverage on offense. Kevin was focused on the defense for for the whole practice and kind of piggybacking off of that, like I mentioned, I thought I got a really a really good opportunity to watch the offensive line up close. And there was a couple guys on that side of the ball. Obviously, Carolina returned all the starters down there at the O-line, just a ton of talent. A ton of big guys on that side of the ball now that, you know, we had that open practice during Mac's first year a couple years ago. Um, just didn't see on that offensive side of the ball. There was a group that looked big and looked like they really could play at this level, but the drop-off was pretty steep just in terms of physique and size and all that kind of stuff. Didn't see that today. I think, you know, you got that core group of offensive linemen that's really talented, but behind that, I thought Jonathan Adorno looked a lot bigger than he did last year. And Diego Pounds, man. I mean, if you didn't know he was a freshman, you would not think he was a freshman. He was, in my opinion, he looked like one of the biggest guys out there. And that guy, you know, has barely been in the weight room so far. So, I mean, I just think the offensive line in particular looked really impressive, a ton of bodies out there. And, you know, that was a group kind of from based on what you were saying about guys just looking bigger. I thought the O-line as a whole just had a ton of examples of that. And Diego Pounds and Jonathan Jonathan Adorno were, you know, just a couple of those guys. And to mention the O-line as well, I thought the leadership that I saw from that group, just how vocal they were kind of getting on each other and trying to get them to, to play harder and get more reps in. And, you know, there was, I forgot who it was at the time. It might've been William Barnes uh, during one of the drills was kind of getting on a couple guys, like, you know, last couple reps, guys, let's go, let's keep playing hard. Then we get a break. So a lot of leadership for some other guys that maybe you wouldn't have expected for, from, but you know, that offensive line, man, it was super impressive to see up close and personal. Yeah, I mean Brian Anderson was very vocal. And very vocal, yeah. Should have mentioned see how that too. far to see how far he's come yeah. since he arrived, and mm-hmm. now he's like the dude. It's really I mean, that's I told, yeah. I told you before why I like covering college sports more than pro sports because mm-hmm. I like watching the Brian Andersons of the world come in. And some people question whether or not he's good enough to play in the ACC. And next thing, and then he gets his chance a couple of years ago when. Um, when Polino uh, went down, you know, yeah, mm-hmm. got hurt against Miami, and you know. Mm-hmm. The grading for his performances were kind of up and down a little bit, but man, it looked like the dude out there today. But you're right; there were that was the most spirited group that I saw today. Mm-hmm. That was there was a lot more chatter in that group than any other group. And and you're right, Diego Pounds, awfully impressive looking at him. You just you have to do like not a double take, you do a triple take. Yeah, I was like, is that is I, I was kind of like, is that Pounds? Because I was well, like, he 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 looks fit for that, the position right now. The thing that, that struck me is that guy was playing basketball a few months ago. I know it, it's unbelievable. I don't want though. him posting me up. No, I would no just way. I would just <laughs> coil off into a ball and say, just score, get it over with already, and mm-hmm. and land on me because you're going to do it anyway. So. Mm-hmm. Uh, he was impressive. I agree with you about a Jonathan Adorno. I really like you know, Jonathan made a lot of uh, progress last August, and Mac talked about him a lot. Uh, Phil mm-hmm. Longo talked about him a lot last August, and and you know he was a name. We thought maybe he might crack the rotation as a true freshman. Well, I expect him to now. He looked the part today. I was really impressed with Caden Baker. Uh, mm-hmm. He was playing left tackle. <clears throat> He's another former basketball player in high school down in Florida. And uh, I really, I what I saw today, and remind, and remember, people uh, may not know this, but Joshua Zuda was not participating this spring. He, yep. He's physically recovering uh, with an injury, and so you didn't have him out there. And I still saw eight deep. I, I think that mm-hmm. 
their stated mission of getting to eight deep is achievable now. They didn't get there a year ago. You know, they, mm-hmm. they, they I think with Adorno, with Baker, Wyatt Tunal, um, Kieran Johnson, you know, these are guys that if pressed in and Montillas as well, because Montillas is filling in for Azudu. So those are 10 names when you think of the starters as well. Those are 10 guys. I think they can achieve eight. I think they mm-hmm. can get they can reach that goal this year. And that will be huge because there's attrition. They they were fortunate last year. They didn't have a lot of attrition on the offensive line, but there usually is some. So they've got to be able to plug some guys in. And, and I and and not just that, but like the younger guys aside for and oh, by the way, William Barnes. So that's eleven. Um yeah. Johnson and Barnes are older guys, the rest of them are younger. I think the future of this group is in very, very good shape, just like the rest of the position groups on this roster. Agreed. Another guy, I'm just going to mention him real quickly because another freshman that was just looked like he had been in the weight room for years was Keyshawn Silver. I mean, did you see him up close and personal? Another basketball player, by the way. Unbelievable, man. I mean, he looked like – when I when I say he looks like an upper upperclassman physically, he in pounds, I mean, I'm not – I don't think I'm exaggerating in that respect. No, I mean, I mean it was you unbelievable. And, and you've been around this stuff close enough. You, you kind of know what you're looking at. I've been around for a long time. And mm-hmm. if I didn't know, if I was, if I had been, if I spent the last 10 years covering Wisconsin and today was my first day covering North Carolina, I would have thought that five was a senior. Yeah. You know, I would have thought that Ritzy was a senior. I would have thought, yeah, no doubt. Barner, I thought Christian mm-hmm. Barner was a guy in the NFL who just came back to train. Yeah, it's unbelievable. So big. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Silver, you know, Silver and Ritzy are freshmen. They look like freshmen when you saw them go through drills today, just like mm-hmm. Ra Ra and Power Eccles. I mean, Ra Ra especially. Ra Ra kind of got put on some weight. He looks mm-hmm. like a safety playing linebacker, and he got a lot Definitely. of teaching today. And people should remember this was their third practice. And Mac told us last week that he's not – he doesn't want those early enrollees to worry about competing right now. He just mm-hmm. wants to be used to the routine of practicing at the college football level. And mm-hmm. it is far different than it was in high school. And, and you could see the head spinning with a few of them some today. And that's cool oh, yeah. because it's got to spin before it stops spinning. Mm-hmm. And everybody out the, else that's out there who knows what they're doing, the Brian Andersons of the world and the Taman Fox of the world, the, all of them, all of their heads were spinning at one time. And that's a beautiful part of this process because spin now on March 26th or whatever it is, 27, I don't know what the day is. Uh, and by the time they get to the spring, I mean, April 24th, it won't be spinning as much. And then when they hit the ground running at the beginning of August, all that stuff will be behind them. The value of the early enrollment is huge. I was watching Drake May some today, and I was thinking, and they were doing some stuff, very competitive, some yeah, seven, very seven competitive. Type stuff. And mm-hmm. watching Drake out there, I was thinking to myself, you know, he could be chucking touchdown passes left, right, and center in high school right now playing in a spring season, but is he? would he be better off? I mean, it's always good to be in a competitive situation, in a game situation against mm-hmm. live competition, against people you don't know. But seeing him out there throwing balls to these receivers, being defended by the, the considerable depth they have in the secondary, he's going to grow a lot more this spring, being in camp at UNC, being in spring practice, and it's not camp, it's spring practice, as opposed to playing a spring season. So all those kids that, that – chose to not play in their high school seasons this, this spring and, and enroll early at Carolina, they're going to be so far ahead when August comes around. And, and by the way, Drake, Drake May is impressive. Jacoby Criswell Definitely. is impressive. Jefferson Boaz, I, in my report that I wrote up for the offense, there are a lot of teams around the country that would like to oh, have yeah. that guy as your fourth quarterback. He's huge, too. <laughs> He's another guy another that's loaded huge. room. How about that? Yeah, exactly. And that's something that, you know, Mac Brown's talk about building depth and we've talked about on this podcast. And like I said, I think that's something he's definitely doing right now. I want to switch the focus real quick um, to the one V ones. I know you, I was watching that pretty hard. That was kind of the moment in practice where for me, at least things really started to heat up a little bit and a little bit of trash talking out there, a lot of energy between the DBs and the wide receivers kind of going at each other. Cam Kelly, Don Chapman in particular, we're talking a ton of trash out there. Tony Grimes as well, like you mentioned. And, you know, obviously it's friendly competition. The guys are going at each other. It's, it's you no know, hate involved or anything like that. I think they really enjoy doing that. I actually asked a couple of the guys that we talked to in the post-practice uh, press conferences via Zoom kind of about that. 
I think it was Josh Downs talked about it. Jaquarius Con- Conley talked about it. So if you haven't seen that, go be, be sure to go read that report. I'll put a link in the description below because there's a lot of good insight from those guys in there. But just what are your kind of initial reactions from seeing those 1v1s? Because like I mentioned for me, I just thought they were super fun and super competitive to watch. Uh, my, my initial reaction is that there's a lot of moxie on this team. Yeah. And when mm-hmm. you look at the best college football teams in America, they're loaded with moxie. Mm-hmm. They got they got dudes that walk the walk, definitely. And, definitely. and I and I think you need that in college football because there's a there's a lot of mono mono stuff, and you need to have the guy that thinks that I'm the dude, and you, and it's okay to wear it on your sleeve in college football. There are certain mm-hmm. positions you, you know you, you remember your quarterback and dial it down. And Sam's not going to be it. That he has a quiet moxie. Yeah, He's that's not who be he out is. With yeah. moxie. But man alive, when I see guys like Conley play. And, and by the way, Cam Kelly. Yeah. You know, keep an eye on Cam Kelly. And he played yeah. with some moxie today. At he likes Conley. to talk, but, man. It's, it was funny to watch. <laughs> and Josh Downs is a personification of moxie. It, mm-hmm. a very outward, but he backs it up. I he, there were, Before they had the 1v1, but this was actually a one-on-one, uh, one versus one situation where Downs ran, he was, he, it was a, a 30 yard straight pattern on the right sideline. The pass from Sam, and it wasn't the most beautiful pass Sam has ever thrown or ever will throw. The ball's a little bit wobbly. And Downs was in a full speed. And the way he was able to change his timing to get the ball with two DBs on him, and he came down with it. it was, when you think of Downs, you think of fleet-footed, take the top off the defense, a guy catches the ball in the middle of the slot and just burns right through the middle past the DBs. This was a physical catch, a tough physical catch that he never should have held on the ball, and he did hold on. He came down, hit hard. He had a couple of DBs there, and he got up, and it's just like, yeah, is that all you got? And I was like, yeah. that, let's remember love, the gig him down. That, yeah. He did the gig him down against a and when he's yeah. down. He's that, got like, moxie for 75 sure. Uh-huh. Oh, man. But you need that. you yeah. got to have guys that get underneath opponent's skin to get mm-hmm. their, get them out of their right psyche. You need it in basketball, and sometimes I can – like with Carolina basketball this year, they didn't really have a ton of moxie. They didn't have the fanny slappers. They didn't have the blank you guy that pisses off other teams. Most mm-hmm. championship teams have guys like that in basketball. You got to have at least one. Football, you got to have a whole host of them. And if they're your skill guys, even more. And plus, they're fun to watch on oh, both yeah. sides of the ball. I don't. I think most people like watching, you know, some theatrics after a play. And mm-hmm. it's part of the sport because it's such a a violent sport. It's such a uh, uh, an emotionally channeled sport that you got to release some of that stuff. And they've got guys that can release it and they just carry that look. When Max says they look like a really good team, it's not because boy, when they walk out of the tunnel, you're impressed. It's the way they carry themselves. It's the fact they've got all that moxie out there and they've got it in the right spots. You know, if your offensive tackle has the most moxie on your team, not sure there's a tremendous benefit from that. But when you got dudes that are taking the top off that have the kind of moxie Josh Downs has, and you got dudes that are keeping guys from taking the top off on the other side of the ball, and they got moxie, and they're showing it, I think that just picks a team up a notch. Another funny Josh Downs moment, or impressive, I should say. It was funny, too, but an impressive Josh Downs moment it was during the 1v1s. I'll, I'll throw the clip in right here. But um, Cameron Kelly, was I think he was talking to Coach Galloway or was just kind of talking to the receivers in, in general. It was just like, come on, somebody get me 1v1 on the line of scrimmage. And Josh Downs steps up and just completely jukes him with his first move and catches a touchdown pass. And they were going back and forth at it. I, I, Cam Kelly got a little quiet after that one, but Josh Downs was, you know, just talking to everybody after that. But like I said, that, that was an hilarious clip that I was able to get on, uh, on camera. And, and that kind of, for me, really personified what we saw from, you know, the, the offense and the defense and those wide receivers and defensive backs going at each other for, it must've been 20, 30 minutes. It seemed like it that was, kind it was stuff, a long period that of time. That kind of stuff is how you get better. Exactly. Exactly. A lot, a lot of competitiveness. Of are, a lot of people don't know what goes on in practice. You know, when you watch football movies mm-hmm. and they show practice where the team is kind of like in uniform at practice and the cheerleaders <laughs> are working out on the side and, yeah. and the quarterback takes his helmet off and goes over and talks to his girlfriend cheerleader for a minute mm-hmm. and the coach yells, Johnson, get on over here. That <laughs> crap ain't happening in college. No, nah, no, nah, definitely not. Fun. I mean, it is, it is precision. It is business-like, but it's, it, but it's got a lot of juice. And their practice, their practice today had as much juice as any practice, spring practice I've been to. I've been to some fall practices, different programs, and this program in the past that had a lot of juice. Uh, but for a third day of spring, 
mm-hmm. uh, ton of juice. I'm glad you picked up on that because I'm totally with you on that. You you could hear the spirit of the practice. I went from we couldn't go on the field, but I went from the uh, basically like a horseshoe from one end zone to the other going around the stadium. Went back around a couple of times, and it sounded the same everywhere I was. Mm-hmm. I guarantee mm-hmm. you that it might seem like a minor thing to some people, but I know the staff notices it. I know that they love that. I know that's something that they absolutely want. Because they didn't have it would be a concern. Yeah, absolutely. I want, to, I want to ask you one last thing before we go ahead and wrap this up, AJ. I think a lot of people are going to be wondering about your kind of initial thoughts on on seeing Ty Chandler in person for the first time. So what did you think about, you know, seeing him? I, and just before you go into that, I thought the running back room in general, I thought DJ Jones was a guy that was leading from the front was and especially in a lot of the drills that they were doing. He was kind of the first guy that was stepping up Caleb hood, another guy that's a true freshman that looks, I think he was probably the biggest running back in that group. Now, granted, you mentioned some of the learning curves that you saw from the likes of Rara going through today. Caleb Hood was kind of having that same kind of practice today. A lot of talking with Larry Porter, a lot of teaching moments for him, but physically wise, I mean, he looks the part, but what were your kind of thoughts on Chandler? And then feel free to dive into that, you know, running back room a little bit more specifically, if you want. I'll get into Caleb in a second. Chandler, you know, I didn't see him do a lot. I never got a chance to see him turn on the burner. So, uh, we've heard that he's super fast. Max said he's super fast. Uh, we haven't, I didn't get you to see that today, but mm-hmm. you can tell he's a mature back. You can tell he's a guy that's, you know, been through the grinder in the SEC. Uh, he, he's, he's got, he's built like a guy. He's who a big take guy. Mm-hmm. Um, he was at the back of the group and all the drills that I saw. I, you know, I don't put a lot of stock into the rotations, especially this early in spring camp. Yeah, you know, especially this time of year. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We're back in August, like August 12th, and we get to see a whole practice. I put a lot more stock in the, in the drill rotations then than I do right now. Uh, he's getting mm-hmm. used to stuff. He's getting to know stuff. Um, but, you know, he looked he looked like I thought he would look. I just didn't mm-hmm. get to see him turn the burners. So mm-hmm. I, I think yeah, I, I, I didn't get forward, to see that either, yeah. I look forward to seeing him in the spring game. Mm-hmm. And I don't know how much we're going to see him. Mean, he's been through all these drills before, just in another program. You know, he yeah. has something to prove because it's a new school, but – Mac also told us last week to be very clear that you know, you're not going to see you know, Tamon Fox out there as much. So because other guys in your play, because Tamon's been through all this stuff, you're not going to see maybe Vahasic get a crap load of reps during practice when Miles Murphy and Clyde Pinder can continue to get those. And, and they're going to get the younger guys a lot more reps, especially as they get move on here in, in spring practice. So I don't really know how they're going to handle the Chandler situation. So, limited knowledge after one day of seeing him more knowledge about Caleb hood, because he just, he, he stood out. He's mm. big, lower body. And huge. Cut him with your staff, cut the <laughs> teaching. Let's remember he was a quarterback in high school. Yep. The rivals rated him as a quarterback, which is one of the reasons why he was a three-star. Um, Dina kept telling me, Andrew, he's a four star. They got to look at him as a running back. He's a four star. Love so that Miss accent, King, man. Miss King, <laughs> And shout out to Chaz Serrat for the Miss King reference. Yeah. Mm-hmm. If Miss King thinks he's a four star running back, then I'm going to go ahead and yield to her and say he's a four star. Yeah, definitely. I'll he take was, her word for that. Mm-hmm. Jacob, he initiated contact. He hit guys. Oh, yeah. well. he's, a, he's a fall forward guy, just like Javante. And maybe there's a little bit of, uh, of a parallel there with him and Javante in some ways, a fair comparison. Um, yeah. With Natro means out there today, and some uh, Kevin and somebody else, a parent said, you know, boy, he's kind of channeling his inner Natro means out there because he runs hard. He does, and he yeah. Runs, he runs physically, and he can run people over because he's strong. He carries that weight that he has well. So I'm looking forward to seeing who he become. And you mentioned DJ DJ Jones. He would have started the ball game if he was healthy. Oh yeah, and, no doubt about it. Yeah. Away, I think in a way it was kind of okay. I mean, it would be nice to see him get those reps, and they certainly would have loved him get those reps. But you know, they kind of knew what they—they they got a really good idea of what they had because of the opt-outs. And I think they're further ahead of that room now than they would have been had Michael and J- and Javante not opted out and actually played in the bowl game. So mm-hmm. EJ Jones was the first guy in the rotation. So I'll go ahead and pull a stock in at least that part of it. Mm-hmm. Looks the part. He definitely he, looks he, the part. He, yeah, he's a good looking back. I mm-hmm. think they're going to be okay there. They're, they're not going to have Javante and Michael, maybe, but they may, they still go post some numbers. And I think that, you know, they want balance. Some game, you don't have to have it every game. It's still longer says, look, it's, it's over the course of the season. You want that balance. You need to be able to, <clears throat> there are going to be games where you need to be able to run it a lot more than other games. There are going to be some games you're just going to chuck it a lot because that's what's there. But 
I do think that when they need to run it, I, I, I have – I'm comfortable saying right now that I think they're going to be okay running the ball. They may not be top ten in the nation, but they're going to run it well enough that they don't have to rely on Sam. I think a lot of people are thinking, oh, my gosh, they got nobody that can carry the ball. Well, they got that line in front of them. Chandler's played a lot of football, ran for 2,000 yards at Tennessee. Mm -hmm. The other guys are in North Carolina for a reason. And most of them are there recruited by this staff. And by the mm -hmm. way, Josh Henderson, a former four-star guard, actually looked pretty good today, too. He was second or third and second in most of the drills. Again, mm -hmm. I'm not sure you're going to put too much stock into that, but um, I think that room's in okay shape. But we're going to do a lot of podcasts where we hit on each position group. But uh, first day in, Jacob, I think there are a lot of positives. You know, everything always looks good in practice. I'm sure Rutgers looks good in yeah. practice. Not to pounce yeah. on Rutgers, but, you know, I'm sure North Carolina looked good in practice in previous years when they weren't very good. Mm. Everybody looks good in practice. But this was different. It, it was different. Definitely what Max said last week, we just look good. Well, mm. yeah, I mean, he knows what he's looking at more than any yeah. of us. Times yeah. a thousand, times a million. Mm. So, yeah, yeah, they look good. Agreed. I think it's a good way to put it. I think it looked like I tweeted it out, but I think it looked like a top 25 team today. You could probably go lower than that, say top 20, top 15 team. But it really looked like a team that, in a program, I should say, that based on what I saw in my limited time, you know, no knock on the previous staff and Larry Fedora, but just from the limited time that I got to see those guys practice a couple of times, just a big difference in size, big difference in the amount of depth, big difference in the, the energy. And, and that was completely different circumstances. So you can't put so much stock into that as well, but definitely the biggest thing that stood out for me today, no doubt was just the energy and the way this team looks, you know, like I said, three practices into spring, still a lot of time before the season, you know, kicks off here over the next few months, but overall, you know, really impressed with what I saw. Anything else you want to add before we wrap this thing up, man? No, this went longer than we anticipated. So we got a usually lot does usually about. does right? <laughs> yeah, it does. we got a lot to talk about. We're going to roll out podcast, talk about each position group. I think we're going to get one more open practice plus the spring game, which is April twenty fourth. So we're going to get a really healthy dose, and we get the access after practice with the Zoom. So we're going to get a healthy dose of Carolina football this spring. I'm excited. It was great to be normal today. To, mm -hmm. We're getting closer all the way around. I figured that very close. The more, yeah, the closer we get to the teams we cover means that everything else in society is opening up and getting closer to being normal as well. So um, I was very, very happy to be there today. Definitely, man. A lot to be excited about if you're a Carolina football fan. I can tell you that from what we saw today. So, yeah, like I said, keep checking back to TargetIllustrated.com and our YouTube channel, Target Illustrated, for all the coverage you need over the next month or so for North Carolina's spring football practice. I've been Jacob Turner. He's been Andrew Jones. If you've enjoyed the video, if you're excited for the football season ahead, make sure you give this video a like. Be sure to share with your friends, subscribe to our channel. We'll see you in the next one. Thanks.